Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper Left Hand Corner. We have Master Ray as the orange Protoss, bottom right hand corner. We have Doodle as the white, kind of cream color. It's not exactly white. Kind of a white with a tinge of green, bottom right hand corner. Protoss. This is on Overwatch. I believe it's loser's pick, so Doodle decided, opted to go to Overwatch. And what we've seen from Protoss player, I think in most PvPs, because of the features on this map where it's kind of got that little bridge, if you recall, for people that remember the map. So there's kind of that little bridge right here, which makes it a little bit more difficult to execute those early pressure builds, early gateway pressure builds. It is a two-player map. And I and usually if you're going for those larger attacks, you kind of got to swing all the way back around if you guys follow my arrow on the mini-map. And so I feel like, yeah, tech is a little bit more favorable on this map. We did see both players open with the a little bit more strict economical robotics facility opening after a single gate. I'm wondering if we're going to see that again on this map from both players again. Because I feel like, yeah, you get that Reaver out, you should be in better position. We'll have to see what develops. Game 1, if you missed it, by the way, I casted this kind of... I casted Game 1 on an off night, mostly because BSL 12 has already started. Gordy, go ahead and check that out if you haven't already, by the way. There have been some fantastic games. I've, in particular, enjoyed the two-touch games. Everything that True Touch played thus far. Gateway, by the way, for both players, looks like it is a mere build. No cheese thus far. And it looked like Master Ray actually sent out a probe a little bit across the corners to just check for cheese, just in case. So he's going to get a little bit of a later probe scout, but is feeling a little bit more assured that there's not a probe inside of his base doing anything sort of crazy. Assimilator and Assimilator for both players. So not opting for the two-gate opener. But anyway, game one... I feel like Doodle was trying to utilize the fact that he has higher APM than Master Ray and go for kind of a multi-pronged, force Master Ray into doing some multitasking sort of stuff. And Master Ray just had more, mo just a flat larger army than he did. And so he was able to take game one. I think it was a pretty intense game one. I was pretty happy with it. Cybernetic score. A little bit earlier than Doodle's Cybernetic score comparatively. But... If you missed game one, I'm going to repeat some of that same information, which is Master Ray is a very efficient player. He is a player that plays precisely and is very thoughtful, honestly, as a result. And that that really shows in everything he does. So even though he is playing with a lower APM count, he still wins games. And I think he shocks a lot of opponents in that regard. First sell it out for both players to chase that initial probe around. Actually, was I did a restart on this. I'm kind of interested that players don't just open a straight... Maybe it's because it's a two-player map, and with an initial zealot and that pressure, you can get across to your opponent pretty rapidly. But I'm actually a little bit surprised because it is a two-player map, and because you have that bridge facet that players don't just open Dragoon to start to get rid of this probe scout. Because the probe scout's guaranteed, right? Inside the base. Range upgrading for both players. It is possible we'll see a cancellation, but mirror builds again thus far. But yeah, I'm... I want to hear that, so if you are a Protoss player and have played on Overwatch to any degree, I'm kind of curious to hear your stance, or I guess two-player maps at large. Why not open Dragoon first to try to kill that Probe Scout? Probe backing out for Master Ray. It looks like that Probe's still sitting in the base for Doodle. And he might have to, if he's going to get out, he's going to have to go around a Dragoon to do it. Taking an initial hit right there, getting boxed in a little bit. Probe running for his life down to four health. And he might be able to get out, actually. Just by the skin of his teeth, this is going to be close. Oh, is the Dragoon going to get there? Going for the cutoff lane. Gets the shot. Close. So Master Ray is going to be up a probe. Small victories. They turn into larger victories over time. Second gateway plopping down now for Doodle. And it looks like we see the one gate into Robo build, which is the same build we saw from Master Ray game one. And he is going to go ahead and start taking some aggressive forward posturing. Interestingly enough. Maybe try to use his units to try to get a scout to get a good look at what Doodle's doing. Doodle plopping down Robo of his own. So he's going to get Robo, which will give him a unit production advantage, but it's going to slow down his Nexus a bit. I believe Master Ray is going to go for a one-gate Robo into Nexus himself. The question is, is how soon does he do that? Prop, ooh, going up. Deciding to engage on top of this while Doodle is somewhat distracted and might get a Dragoon kill out of it. Looks like the Dragoon has five health. And Master Ray still pressing this, loses his Zealot as a result, and is at close to reinforcement points. A little bit of a loss for Master Ray, but a bit of a win in, as far as the information he was able to gather. 
and might be in a little bit of trouble, because keep in mind, he's producing at, first of all, these units are a distance away from his opponent's location, but also, with that attack, he was able to see that third Dragoon pop out, which I think gives him a bit of an indication that... I'm not sure, actually. I'll pull that back, pull that one back. Usually, if you saw two Dragoons popping out right there, you have an idea that you're up against two gate, but I think the way Doodle played this, I'm not sure that Master Ray has any additional information. Scout... I think this is just a scout from Doodle sneaking out. It's possible he's going for sneaky tech, but I think he's trying to get an eye on what Master Ray's up to, because Master Ray pushing that front door might have been an indication to kind of push things back. So he's going to go ahead and put a pylon here at the 6 o'clock. We do have an observatory, but also robotic support bay there to follow. Master Ray trying to claim position on this bridge, but again, as long as Doodle holds kind of this, this kind of ring, he should be able to hold that ad nauseum. 9 o'clock position, the Doodle, yeah, actually has managed to sneak a scout all the way around, and I think he's going to be able to sneak and see this Nexus unabated. Doodle's a ways off a of Nexus. He might actually have an opening here, depending on Reaver Micro and when this Reaver's produced, because the Reaver's still not there, so now he's wandering up, sees the Nexus. This was only one gate of production this entire time for Master Ray, and this has been a constant production from Doodle, but it looks like Doodle is opting instead to get his Nexus rather than push things. I do like that he kind of placed this pylon right here to get a good look. One, at any shuttle that might be coming across, but two, just in case there were sneaky expansions, things like that. Master Ray's gonna have a sizable advantage, not necessarily in economy right this second, but he's gonna be able to see absolutely everything because Doodle is way behind in getting this initial observer out. In fact, I don't think, he, does he have an observer? Oh, sorry, no, I take it back. I missed it. He's got some observers out in the field, but getting a huge eyeful right here of everything his opponent has. Seeing those two gates, he doesn't know when they went up, but he knows that they're there. He's also going to be able to see the robotics tech, and I think at this stage, Master Ray has to know that he's somewhat ahead. Is he going to plant a pylon up here as well to deal with any sort of robot, uh, potential robo tech? Maybe. Both players playing very, very defensively, going for more of a long-term macro-style game. Master Ray actually producing that reaver before a shuttle, which is more of a defensive maneuver. And Doodle getting his own observer out. I think he's actually going to be able to kind of push out and maybe even see some things along the corner. Master Ray going to get a slight economic advantage. He's up three probes. Just shows you the efficiency even at low APM. Able to see, but fully saturating his natural expansion just a slight bit ahead. It's going to give him a very small advantage. He does have a three probe advantage otherwise. And Doodle just a few seconds later going ahead and saturating that. So things about dead even here. In fact, I think it's exact even on tech as well because there's two gates right there. Looks like Master Ray has discovered this pylon at the 9 o'clock location. He does have a probe there, so he's kind of transmitting that he was maybe thinking, and actually might be able to take out Doodle's Observer. So able to take out Doodle's Observer right there. And this shows you just the efficiency of Master Ray. He's like, okay, what are the things I'm going to do at this stage? I'm going to go ahead and clear the vision out. going to go ahead and, and press forward. I don't know that he's necessarily going for this quick third. But he's certainly posturing like he is. Still no second gas from either player, by the way, which suggests they're going for, again, kind of a slower... Macro style. We do see additional gateways being popped down, so that's going to be five here for Master Ray continuing to produce observers. And the opposite corner just still sitting at two for Doodle. He does have a probe in position to plop some stuff down, though. So Doodle not producing units. It looks like, okay, now he's saving up. He's going to go ahead and plop down two gateways of his own. We'll check in just a moment. So yeah, plopping down two gateways. Let's see if he waits for that third. Both players basically mirroring here, and essentially everything that's happened thus far, Master Ray's just been a slight step ahead. Just a slight step. So it looks like Doodle's going to sit at four gate, which is going to give Master Ray one gateway of production more in the Dragoon count. Anyone's game still, and it's been very, very quiet overall. Very, very quiet both directions. Both players just sitting back, going for more of the long-term economic style. But as I say that, Doodle has this shuttle that is going to be engaged. Oof. Loses a little bit of base armor. Dropped off his ult to go ahead and take out that pylon. You can see where these pylons at the forward position can really pay dividends. Because you don't need that observer there. You can have that more being mobile in the forward fill. I don't know if this ult's going to be able to get this done. Might actually just get taken out. So that'd, that'd be a slight loss. These Dragoons going for cutoff lane want to try to catch this shuttle across the map. You need to be careful doing so. Looks like they are able to do so. Or sorry. Looks like the shuttle's going to sneak out but they're not going to lose their lives for it, so worthwhile. I love this observer positioning from Master Ray, just kind of across the bridge, so you can see when his opponent's being aggressive. Master Ray with a not negligible, but not significant supply count lead. Gas up for both players. 
And Master Ray, yeah, in a really strong defensive position. I'm kind of curious who's going to take the initiative and either go for the third or go for some sort of additional forward positioning. Doodle, of course, has gone out with the shuttle. He's got two Reavers on his front comparatively, so he's, he's got a very mirrored uh, defensive front. But I feel like Master Ray has done an excellent job and actually even putting a cannon back here. This could be disastrous for Doodle. And this could be the shift that gives Master Ray an opportunity to go ahead and press out of his main base and go for a forward attack. Or at least deny a third. Because this shuttle is being dropped off. It's spotted, running into the cannons. Doodle is able to back it off. But once again, at risk of maybe getting it picked off. Those Dragoons going for a cutoff lane. And we do have these Dragoons that were already placed at that forward position. A single Zealot moving its way across is going to distract one of them. Fortunately for Doodle, he's able to get it back. But it looks like lost one Zealot to the north. Was able to damage a pylon. Might lose another Zealot here. And he was... Already a little bit behind in general supply count, so might have wanted those zealots for something here in the meantime. Back at the bases, we do have zealot leg speed being upgraded for Doodle. He's up to six gateways, so going for more gateway man in the mid game. He's got that forge down. Level 1 weapons is already upgrading, if I can find the forge. Level 1 weapons is already upgrading for Master Ray. He's getting zealot leg speed. It's going to come about a bit later. He's just sitting at five gateways comparatively. So I think Doodle is looking to be aggressive, and honestly, even losing those handful of Zealots in the meantime could be significant. Doodle's basically kind of keeping his opponent back. Looks like Master Ray's trying to go ahead and take um, Pylons out, but Master Ray, I almost feel like he's just absorbing all of these attacks. I mean, yeah, he was able to take out a Pylon here, but I actually might even get an additional Zealot, but that was, what, three Zealots for for that? And plus just all this deny time, and actually, again, these Dragoons trying to sneak and find that shuttle. And that shuttle might be pinned. Master Ray's in the red, though, losing that pylon. That's actually going to let Doodle kind of catch up economically. This Dragoon might be able to catch a pylon comparatively, but actually might get taken out. Ugh. Wake up, Dragoon! Still going for it, attacking the wrong thing, getting taken out. And that's also going to allow the shuttle to sneak back around. Wow, how did he... how did he know? Both players, sizable army, defensive cannon out here. It looks like Master Ray is taking initiative and going to go ahead and take his third base at the 12 o'clock. 6 o'clock base for Doodle. He is setting up to go ahead and take that. He's actually floating a lot of minerals right now, and he's still been pumping out of these six gates. I think Doodle... He also has these two shuttles with speed, with four reavers, which suggests he's going to be aggressive here. Um, he actually might, if he plays it just right, he might be able to catch Master Ray off guard and pick off a couple of these Dragoons in these forward locations. Once he gets here, though, again, because of this bridge, unless he goes all the way around, might be a little bit more challenging. But coming across this mid area, he might have an opportunity to go ahead and wipe out that 12. We'll see. He's starting to gather up those forces. He is going to find that observer. I don't even know that observer is attackable. Master Ray repositioning it briefly. If Master Ray is on top of it, he should be able to kind of reposition. Actually, with a little bit of nudge, he might have been able to open up a window to where these shuttles might not have been spotted. Master Ray actually moving out to the upper right-hand corner. I'm wondering if that was to catch shuttles or just kind of spot things out there. But now moving out, Master Ray might sweep in. So this might be similar to game one. I'm wondering if Master Ray has a good idea of where this army location is. I think Doodle has better concavity here. Concavity? Concave? Better concave if he was engaging at this point. Kind of forcing a re-maneuver across here. Psy Storm just about finished. And that could be the difference in this fight, to be honest. I do not see any High Templar for Doodle. And these are just small bridges. He's moving to that 9 o'clock location. And is only going to be able to find a pylon here. That's not where Master Ray had his base. And Master Ray taking up the high ground position, which is going to give him an advantage across this midfield. I almost feel like this is going to come down to one big attack. And I feel like if Doodle does it now, that'll cost him the game. Especially if Master Ray lands these Psy Storms just precisely from this high ground advantage. And unfortunately, Doodle... Walking up around the corner. Now engaging. Psystorm does not catch much initially. It was a good Psystorm, but did not uh, catch a lot and actually stormed a few of his own zealots. Another good Psy... Well, another Psystorm. Again, whiffing mostly. Three High Templar comparatively for Doodle regathering. He does have these shuttles with these Reavers, and that could be the Axe Factor. Keep in mind, they do have speed. So they might be able to sneak in underneath, maybe get a couple additional kills. That could be the shift. But that would be a very risk maneuver. And Master Ray, honestly, can just dive in underneath. Starting to stake claim in that upper right-hand corner. A couple Zealots flooding forward. I think that was just a misrally for Doodle. They do, they die, they, they spend their lives, but they 
do provide some valuable scouting information. As I say that, the Reavers able to drop at that natural expansion, wiping out everything there. But as Master Ray sees that, he's starting to press down into the middle of the map. These Reavers trying to regather a single zealot spawning that army. I don't know, well, are they going to be able to get out? They should be able to jut. Yeah, okay, they're going to be able to jut straight down that map. A couple zealots running through the gap. Doodle's having some trouble keeping his army cohesive, but as is Master Ray. But now Master Ray might lose these shuttles. Lost one shuttle. That's two Reavers. That was huge. He's re-engaging across the middle of this field. His High Templar a little bit out of position. Good side storm across a couple of Dragoons there. Another good side storm. And the initial side storm. Wow, brilliant side storms for both players over across a large portion of the army. I think it's anyone's match. The continued side storms obliterating the back line of Doodle, though. And Master Ray coming out and actually able to wipe out those shuttles as well, getting the much better exchanges overall. Oof, that was a huge win for Master Ray. Just has a gigantic army now flooding into the natural expansion. I don't know that Doodle has enough. As long as Master Ray just moves his army before... Yeah, see, this is the problem with that bridge. He just needs to move this army forward. Doodle still might have an opportunity to defend this. Psy storming the, the edge there. Catching a little bit of his own Dragoon. Catching a little bit of his own Dragoon again, but really weeding out a lot of those Zealots. God, man, he could win the game right here if it was not for this feature to get across. He just needs to walk across to finish it, but not able to, again, because of that map feature and because of the concavity. But this gives Master Ray... He doesn't need to win this engagement here. He just needs to be a threat. And actually position right back down, deny that fourth. A, dish, a bunch of cannons dropping down for Doodle. That's going to hurt his kind of supply. As long as Master Ray transfers some probes from his main, which it looks like uh, is completely empty. If he can just get this mining, he's going to take the a huge economic lead. He's currently producing out of seven, eight gateways compared to the, well, eight both sides. But Master Ray, huge supply up after that last battle. And he's going to be able to deny this fourth base in the bottom left hand corner. So he's in a really good economic position. This is really, I feel like this is like classic long-term macro PvP uh, style. Doodle regathering his army. This is very zealot heavy. And this is against Dragoons. They do have speed. So some Psy Storms could be the difference again in this fight for Master Ray. I don't see a lot of, okay, I do see some High Templar now. Looks like four High Templar and a slow Le Weaver walking. Master Ray catching him out of position. The Archon able to get forward on top of those Zealots. A little bit of a whiff there from Doodle with those initial Psy Storms. A good follow-up though. And again, a little bit of a whiff. And I think that, wow, that might be it. Master Ray really engaging well. Those Psy Storms actually hitting a lot of Dragoons. Master Ray walking through it is going to get on top of that Reaver. Beautiful Psy Storm completely wiping that out. And he still has a large standing Dragoon army. There is a Dark Templar here. And I think somewhere in those Psy Storms... Ended up losing an Observer. The Observer able to regather that Dark Templar, sensing it and backing off. Doodle, yeah, he's holding his, his base, but he is, again, falling behind further and further economically as this proceeds. You can see on them, ooh, taking out the Observer. That's going to make the Dark Templar even more effective. Some Psy Storm dropping down. I don't think it's catching any of those high... Well, catch... Sorry, take it back. Took one High Templar. Master Ray desperately trying to use Psy Storm to catch these High Templar and also soften up the rest of this army. I don't see any Observer out in the field. And losing some High Templar as well. Invisible men, I tell you. And two High Templar are getting taken out. So Doodle's going to be able to hold and stand. Might lose this Archon, which is essentially... Uh, still might be able to get some damage. Nope, he's going to try to run with it. See what... Yeah, another Observer flooding forward. So Doodle getting a little bit of map control, but I don't think there's a lot he can do with it. Trying to flood two Zealots out. There are cannons here to go ahead and defend that. Upper right-hand corner, nothing to defend that. So maybe if the Zealots got in the upper right-hand corner, might be able to get some damage done. Trying to rely on Dark Templar to just frustrate Master Ray a little bit, but honestly, here's some attacking happening somewhere. I'm not sure what's happening, though. Looks like it was happening. So the Dark Templar made it up here, died on the cannons. I'm not sure if they got a lot of probe kills. Master Ray setting at 48 probe. So basically, the probe count's even, but the difference here is Doodle is, is mining off a thin base and the 6 o'clock. So kind of like 1.2 bases, where Master Ray... <laughs> look at all these cannons plopping down. Is mining there, there, and his natural is actually still pretty, pretty well. It's pretty functional. Kind of curious what, maybe just early saturate, early probe saturation for Doodle. Again, pushing up the zealots, not quite in position. The dragoons are a little bit back on the low ground, so might be some misfiring. The observer taken out comparatively, so he's not going to have to worry about that getting picked off. So those dark temple are not completely negated, but not as effective as they would be. High Templar now here might be some brilliant side storms. Looking for that observer, catches the observer. Does it? It does take it out. 
But counter Psy Storm on top of the Dragoons. There's GG from Doodle. He just didn't have enough to get it done. His one hope was to pick off the Observer and continue to use Dark Templar to stay in this match. Instead, getting wiped out. So Master Ray, again showing just, yeah, that precision and great decision making at the exact right times, carrying him through the match. And just, yeah, nice macro play all the way through. That's really, if you want to see like a classic how to do macro PvP, this is a really good example on both sides, in my opinion. Anyway, moving on to game three. Master Ray is currently up 2 0 over Doodle. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.